Give him that. Now I didn't get it. Wait a minute, he may give you something greater. That's right. <laughs> you never know. That's right. So even in that, there are some things, and that's why I said that's why that scripture was chosen in Ephesians because it brings us to a better understanding. Mm -hmm. It shows you where you once were. Mm -hmm. It shows you where you are right now, and shows you what's yet to come. That's right. So that's the greater understanding of relationship. Amen. Another, another, another thing too, George, as you were saying. Uh, how grace unites us is we have to make sure we're walking in that unconditional love. That's right. I thought that's critical. And that is again, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. the definition, it's a definition because the word love, it gives us four different definitions. But we talk about the love of Jesus when he walked this earth. Mm -hmm. How did he love us? He loved us unconditionally mm -hmm. and he loved us sacrificially. Yeah. So we have to have that mindset and we have to continually renew our minds with the love of God, how he loved me, that's who I'm supposed to be loving you, sacrificially mm -hmm. and unconditionally. Yes, sir. And when we can do that, you see grace shows up. That's a picture of grace right there. Yes. When you can love that brother and sister the same way Jesus loves us. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. Yeah. And moving on to my questions, are you done, George? Yes. Okay, uh, I had a question. Uh, it said, explain the term Affecting the saints as it relates to Ephesians, the fourth chapter, uh, 11 through 16th verse. Uh, as I look at this particular passage here, it's, and it says, 11th verse, it says, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Mm -hmm. Or the edifying of the body of Christ. The 13th verse says, Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God mm -hmm. unto a perfect man, you know, that's a mature man, mm -hmm. unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the state of men. And the carnal craftiness whereby they lie, the way they deceive. It says, 15 verse, it says, speaking the truth in love, mm -hmm. they go up unto, unto him in all things which is the head, even Christ. And again, the question was uh, explain that term perfecting. As I looked at that particular word, perfecting the saints, uh, what I got out of that is it's more or less like putting something into the right order. Something putting something into the right place, or it can mean mending something that is broken. And, and mm -hmm. as I look at that, uh, when we look at the body of Christ, uh, we have to make sure, first of all, that we're in the right place. Mm -hmm. And as Paul was saying here, mending something that's out of place, we can look at a bone or look at the structure of our physical body. Mm -hmm. If I break a bone, the first thing I need to do first is put that back in place because if I don't put it back in place it's not going to grow the proper way right. with that being said uh, Paul is also saying to this body talking about the body of Christ let's walk together mm -hmm. well how can we walk together in unity if we're not staying connected mm -hmm. to the source which is the foundation mm -hmm. as Paul picked up earlier on the, the first three chapters he talked about the doctrine the mm -hmm. teaching, what we should be grounded in, learning about the teachings and the principles that Jesus Christ laid to his disciples, which is supposed to have today. Now, as this fourth chapter on through the uh, sixth chapter, he talks about our responsibility as children of God. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. spiritual unity, we already have that in Christ mm -hmm. because we're dealing with what? The finished work of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So the plan, the foundation has already been laid all we need to do is to walk in obedience mm -hmm. to what the word of God say. Well, you say, well, how can we do that? Well, we know everything is a process. Mm -hmm. In order for me, and when a babe gets birthed into the body of Christ, that babe has to go through the proper channels of being cared for, nurtured, and being taught. Because what is the goal? Is to bring that babe to maturity so that they can do the work of the mm -hmm. ministry. And we can't do the work of the ministry if we are not mature or we're not in the right place. 
So what Paul has in mind is the body of Christ walking together in unity. Mm -hmm. And unity just doesn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. You have to work at being unified in the body of Christ. And as George and Sister Mark were saying, it's not about me, it's not about you. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure it's all about Jesus. We say we want God to get the glory, but we won't submit to his word. Uh, and we won't, we won't allow him to work through us to love his brother and his sister. Because remember now, we're all in the same family. Mm -hmm. And Paul paints a picture to us about our physical body, how each member in the body, how they're important, how they're unique, Mm -hmm. and how they work together. Mm -hmm. And it's not like the smallest member in my physical body, even the largest member in my physical mm -hmm. body. They are needed and they are useful mm -hmm. and they work together. You know, you're not gonna see one of your members in your physical mm -hmm. body bite each other or attacking each other. No, no, each one of these members know what they're supposed to do mm -hmm. and they help, they help each other. When one member is hurt, all hurt. Oh. And when one member is down, all is down. And what does the other members do? They compensate. They help. They build. They encourage this member until this member can get back helped again. So mm -hmm. that's the attitude that Apostle Paul desires for the church to be today is that we have to walk together in unity by preparing ourselves. We have to prepare ourselves. We have to equip the saints. And that was the reason why God gave the gifts to the body of Christ so that we can help the children of God mature so they can go out and do the work of the ministry. Wow. Mm -hmm. And my second question was, how imperative is it that we as a body of Christ follow wholesome doctrine mm -hmm. as it relates to Ephesians 4, mm -hmm. chapter, the 14th verse? Mm -hmm. Whereas it talks about the 14th verse that we henceforth be no more children mm -hmm. tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men mm -hmm. and the cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait mm -hmm. to deceive us. Mm -hmm. Well, I got a lot out of that particular thing because if the body of Christ is gonna follow wholesome doctrine, mm -hmm. you gotta say, well, what is wholesome doctrine? Well, that's the teaching and the principle that Jesus gave to his disciples. Mm -hmm. And once we follow that and have a foundation of that particular teaching, and the foundation of what we believe, we no longer can walk in ignorance because it's not God's will that we walk in ignorance. Mm -hmm. It's His will that we walk in knowledge. And mm -hmm. when He say, "My people, what perish for what the lack of knowledge," so therefore, when we're knowledgeable about who we are in Christ, what we have, and what we can do in Christ, then you'll be able to see the body of Christ come together, united as one. So I got a lot out of that particular passage, and also. Uh, we think we think about this. What what we believe make a big difference. Because if I'm believing, if I don't believe in the right thing, it has a, a way of determining how I behave. Mm -hmm. Because if I don't believe right, you can look for my behavior not to be right. Mm -hmm. But if I believe the right thing, then you will see the behavior in line with the scripture wow. and the word of God. Yeah. So again, um, I thought these two very interesting questions here. And the last one was about um, what does it mean to you to be unified by grace in 2020? Well, what I got out of that is, it means to be brought together under a divine purpose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we got to keep that in mind, brought together under a divine purpose. Well, you say, what is that divine purpose? What's the purpose of God? And I think this is where, I think every believer has to do a gut check of themselves, and the mm -hmm. reason why I say that mm -hmm. is because mm -hmm. it doesn't know, it doesn't matter where you're located, what you're fellowship, fellowshipping at. If I know that I'm brought to this location under a divine purpose, then it doesn't matter what the storm, what the wind, or whatever circumstance that come my mm -hmm. way, I know that God has placed me here, mm -hmm. and He has placed me here for a purpose, for a reason to, to do my assignment. So therefore. If I know this divine purpose, I won't be easily swayed or easily to run when trouble comes. Mm -hmm. Because we know when trouble comes, that's the acid test right there to know mm -hmm. what you really made of in so many words. So I thought that was very interesting. And of course, as we were saying, it's the grace of unity that's within us. And that's what grace is. It starts within first. And once we know that that grace within, then we're able to 
walk together as one movement. Uh, thank you, uh, Deacon Higgins. You, I had a question for you. Mm -hmm. Under that, for the perfecting of the saints, do you think the body of Christ has really taken serious note to that perfecting of the saints? And sometimes, you know, folk are looking to get their church on. Put it that way. Right. Uh, that's why I say get their church on. They just want to go to church. I don't want nothing else. Mm -hmm. yeah, but the perfecting of the saints is what God's intent exactly. for the perfecting. I mean, all of us uh, uh, bring a big ball to that maturity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think the body of Christ, as it is today, uh, has taken that seriously, the perfecting of the saints? I think, I think the body of Christ today has taking that for granted. Uh, and when I say taking that for granted, meaning yes, that we come short, we miss the mark in this particular area here. Because see, this in order for the body to walk together and to walk into unity, yes, sir. the saints has to be mature and they have to be able to grow in this particular area here about perfecting the saints. We talk about maturity here, and we talk about people being in the right place in the oh, right Lord. order. And the gift that God has given to the body, to his church, these gifts are not supposed to crash. No, sir. They're not supposed to run into each other. Even though you may have the same gift similar, but God has a way to take that gift to a different level where we don't run into each other. Mm -hmm. So again, yes, the body of Christ, I can say we come short in this particular area, mm -hmm. but it behooves us, though, now that we're knowledgeable of what things concerning the scripture here, that that we don't take this for granted. We need to make sure that these babes that's coming to the body of Christ, that they get the right nurturing, the right teaching. Because think about this. Physically, when a baby is, is first born, that baby doesn't even know they're in the world. So that baby has to be nurtured, has to be taught, mm -hmm. and it has to grow. Yeah. It's the same way spiritually. Mm -hmm. You think because a person comes to Jesus Christ spiritually that they know spiritual things, they don't know spiritual things, mm -hmm. and therefore they have to be led and guided into the right place. You can't let them freelance and do what they think is right. No, sir. And this is where we come short, and this is why the body has been, these saints has been, have not been perfected in the in the in the in the body. Mm -hmm. It's because we've been let them go freely, like mm -hmm. they know what's going on. Yeah. No, it's like when you come to be a part of this ministry or become part of this body here, this body lets you know. What is required of you, mm -hmm. and this body lets you know what the what we're going to be teaching you in order for you mm -hmm. to grow wow. and to mature and to get to the level that God desires. Mm -hmm. You wonder why we can't make disciples, and that's our mandate. Jesus yeah. said, "Go make yeah. disciples." Yes, but why can we not make, make disciples? Yeah. As we just said before, these particular yeah. passages of Scripture has to be in place. People has to be in right order. We have to know what our gift is. So that's the reason why God sent the gifts mm -hmm. for the body of Christ, that they may be edified and lifted up so that we can perfect them in the, in the ministry. Mm -hmm. I think as, as, uh, just in response to that question, Pastor, mm -hmm. I think uh, a lot of times the church has gotten off focus. Mm -hmm. And so we're not thinking about perfecting because we're focused, the church is focused on the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. They focused on numbers. Yes. Mm -hmm. They focused on making a uh, little G gods yeah. in, in the church. Mm -hmm. And they are missing uh, getting back to the basics of this yeah. word of God. Yeah. And when we think about it, you know, back in the day, you know, it, it was it was natural and it was common that holiness and righteousness was mm -hmm. preached and taught. But now when you when you uh, really listen to some of them, the only thing they want to talk about is prosperity, mm -hmm. and and they ain't even talking about Jesus or going. Right. They ain't talking about living right at all. Right. And they ain't talking about making disciples. That's not what they're talking about. So you can't perfect the saints if you're not talking about the perfect word of God. Because what they all talking about is not the perfect word of God, but it's what they want to talk about. Because these people now have itching ears, and they want something to tickle them, and they have strayed away from the teachings of God. Yes. You go to a lot of these churches now, and I'm not condemning anybody, but there's no Bible study. There's no Sunday school. There are no sessions where you can sit down and actually crack open this word, delve into it, and allow people to have conversations 
conversation. And then they want to sit the mothers down and let anything else go now and the fathers of the church. And then, you know, back in the day, they could tell us. Oh, um, baby, no, you need to you need to fix that. But now the mamas want to get mad <laughs> because somebody trying to help perfect your children. Yeah, yeah. And this is what we have now when we look at this generation and what they are doing and what they're allowed to get away with and how our prison systems are filling up with them. But we're making more prisoners instead of disciples. Mm -hmm. All right. And another point Ooh. too, Pastor, and Sister Marcus, what you were saying. I believe also it's very imperative also that we follow the unified vision. Yeah. And see, that's another thing too. Uh, if we don't know what the vision is, as the, as the scripture said, the people perish. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? You, you run wild. Mm -hmm. You run in all different directions. So once the unified vision is in place, and these babes or these, whoever become a part of this ministry, once they learn what the vision is, then you'll know whether or not you're in the right place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes yeah. people doesn't, they just yes. feel because Mama say they here, mm -hmm. however you got here. But the bottom line is this this ministry is going to run off of what the Word of God says. Yes. The foundation has already been laid. Yes. So, therefore, once we know what the vision of the ministry is that yes. God has gave to the pastor, yes. Then we can walk in line. Yes. And we start with the leaders first. Oh, yes, Lord. Now, once the leaders are walking in line with that vision, then you're going to see the other herd follow. That's right. Oh, that's right. Oh. It's not going to be like this group was walking here or this group is in that order. No, we're walking in the same direction. This yes. is the vision yes. of the house. Just like your home. Ain't but one vision. Right. Mm -hmm. And then right. any corporate America business, mm -hmm. one vision. In the house of God, one vision. one vision. If you don't have one vision, you got that vision. <laughs> and that's where it comes in, at, brothers. And that's where I believe it affects us. And I believe that's why, you know, even with your scripture where he says, tell for us to sit together and we're talking about the sufficient enough grace. Yeah. And then we go to this part where he brings us together yeah. and brings us to a better understanding yes. that we're not taught. Right. That's right. Like children, we're, we're with no, with with no really structure. Mm -hmm. And once we get that structure, mm -hmm. uh, pandemic can't bother it. Situations can't bother it. The president can't bother. Yeah. Can't nothing bother this because you're centered, you're stable on this understanding that that no matter what comes, what may, I'm still going to be mm -hmm. where God wants me to be. Yes. Amen. I'm cooperating. Yes. In this gift that God has given me. What a blessed time. Anyone? Yeah. Brother Joe. Quick response to yes, sir. Sister Savandra, uh, 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 Sister Marcus, and Brother Calvin. Uh, when it comes to talking about for, uh, prosperity, my opinion is if you ain't talking about Jesus, you ain't talking about nothing. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> prosperity yes. is for the flesh. Jesus is about spirit. This flesh is going to die one day. Yes, yeah. The spirit goes on. That's right. And Brother Cameron brought up, brought, brought up one good word, uh, mm -hmm. taking it for granted. Mm -hmm. uh, think about relationships. Somebody that you hadn't seen, that you love very much, and you hadn't seen them in a while, and then they show up and how glad and happy you are mm -hmm. to see them and whatnot. But why is it that it takes maybe time apart or a desperate situation for us to have an appreciation mm -hmm. for, for this person? Yeah. I think in any relationship, and principally with our relationship with the Lord, there ought to be a best effort mm -hmm. to keep it new. Mm -hmm. You can have married couples, mm -hmm. you can have best friends and whatnot, you can have our relationship, mm -hmm. our parental, uh, f familial uh, relationship with the Lord. And if we don't keep it new with the Lord, yeah. that he is the special thing in our lives, mm -hmm. don't let it fade away, don't, let it, don't take it for granted. Oh, 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 that's just God. No, he ain't just God. He is everything we need for him to be and yes. even everything that we want him to be. Yes. We need to keep it new, just like a, a, a new couple need to keep it new. Mm -hmm. Stay friends, be friends, mm -hmm. whatever sacrifice it takes to uh, uh, keep it new. I mean, it's not that you're going to gussy over them all the time and whatnot, but keep it new yes. and with your best effort. Yes. Oh, you need to keep it new uh, with our best effort, mm -hmm. with, with the Lord. Yes that he is going to be the best thing in our life each and every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The greatest uh, gift, and, and we, we say this, you know, even when it comes to the end, uh, he's so
December uh, month, uh, we talked about the greatest gift uh, mm -hmm. that God has ever given to mankind as his son. Yes. And we do thank God today. And I'm thinking about that, Brother George, that, that oftentimes uh, I, I believe it's kind of like a child getting a new toy. Mm -hmm. Whenever I think about what the Lord has done in my life, and, and, and I, you know, I can't speak for no one else, but the giddiness, mm -hmm. the joy yes. that overwhelms my soul when I think of what he's done for me, that should be celebrated not only in December, but yes. January yes. throughout the yes. whole year's time. Mm -hmm. And I, I go back to what the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul, he, he was not, he was not uh, uh, prohibited mm -hmm. from telling his testimony. Right. What happened on Damascus Road was a blessing to him, and he, he made known to it. Even when he stood before uh, King Agrippa, I, I got to tell you, King Agrippa, I, I tell you what he does for me. Yeah. And I believe that should be all of us when we realize that that point. Go right back to that point when the Lord came into our lives. That should bring a giddiness about us or a joy about us. That when we come in contact with our brothers and sisters, that you know you ought to have joy. Your, your joy is the same joy that, you know, what he's done for you. Yes. But when he's done, what he's done for me, I believe it should not, we shouldn't wait to December the 25th. That's right. To, to uh, allow us to come to an understanding of what we've got throughout the year. God's been good to us. Yes. Now through this year with sufficient yes. grace, yes. bringing us together, yes. understanding that I've, I've got something to keep y'all together. Yes. And what keeps us together is that common understanding that the word of God can keep us. Even yes. when pandemics come and all the other situations trouble our lives. But we throughout 2020, now listen to me. We, we studied this, you know, grace, uh, motivated by grace. We, we talked about hearing by grace. Yes. We talked about a whole lot of things. But the key issue is grace. Amen. And when you talk about grace, mm -hmm. he gave it to me, he gave it to you, he gave it to every one of us. And there's nobody right. Yes. <laughs> it's good to know right there. Amen. So today we do thank you for joining in with us. And, and I thank God for our, our uh, instructors today, Deacon Higgins, Reverend Marcus, Brother George, for uh, sharing with us in, in these understandings. Now, this is not the last table talk we're going to have. We're going to have some more in the upcoming years. And, and, and as we have them, what we do is solicit the understanding. We get up and, you know, people from, from, the, from the body of Christ to help us to understand that whatever gift you have, operate in it. I'm ready in it. Yes. Glorify God because of it. And whatever he give you, whatever gift, just thank him for it. Yes. Because he gave it to you to edify the body of Christ. Amen? Yes. God bless you. May heaven smile on you. Thank you again to all. Any closing words? Truly, we do thank God to, for uh, these our brothers and sisters in helping us uh, to bring this to pass. And may you, uh, as the listening public, hear what has been said here that it may draw you closer to the Lord. And if you do not know the Lord, today is a good day to open up your heart and accept the Lord as your Savior today. Amen. It'll make, it'll make, it'll make Christmas uh, 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 an event by itself. But when you accept him, Christmas will be in January. Christmas will be in February. Christmas will be in March. Christmas will be overwhelmed the pandemic. Christmas will overwhelm everything you got because this will take precedence over everything you've got. God bless you. May heaven smile on you.